Hello, listeners. Welcome back to Trady Wife Life. I'm joined by another fantastic real Trady Wife today. I'm loving the caliber of guests that we've had through. And our guest today, Edwina, and I have just had a fantastic big chat off air. I know you're going to love it just as much as I do. Edwina, thank you for joining us. Life pleasure. Thank you for having me today. Absolute pleasure. Edwina is a plumber's wife. And I just know there's a whole bunch of jokes that could go onto the back of that. And I really feel like if we're going to hear any today, they're probably going to come from Edwina. Because if you listen to the Tradies and Business uh, podcast, you'll know that I'm really shit at telling jokes. Pardon the pun. Uh, Edwina. Tell us, how on earth did you come to be talking to me here today? I was dropped in by the lovely Matt Eschler, who I know is involved in your business. Um, Matt and I go back a number of years now um, when Matt was formerly part of the Master Plumbers Association of New South Wales. Um, Matt was pivotal during that time. We had issues with challenging employees. Um, we lived through the whole COVID craziness um, and Matt was an amazing support for Dave and myself in our business and kind of keeping things running during that really scary time because we're in Sydney Metro, so there were a lot of areas that were impacted. Um, we also had uh, employees that were residing in lockdown areas um, in specific um, shires that literally couldn't leave. Um, but being an essential service, Matt really helped us navigate that whole kind of path. And yeah, and here we are. So now I know Matt's involved in your business and dodged me in. But we'll see how we go. He's a stellar guy, uh, Matt. He's, um, yeah, he is just one of the most supportive. Matt's going to really love this bit or really not. Oh, you don't, all. Don't, don't share this. Just delete all of this. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And he really has been a terrific supporter of tradies and business and what we do here. Um, yeah. However, I actually feel Matt is as passionate as we are about supporting the trades full stop. I, I don't think it's just about um, our business or specific people that he connects with. I think it's the trade altogether. So it's fantastic to um, be introduced to you through Matt. Yeah. We can do some dirt later off air when he's not listening. 100%. I've got a few stories. All of the content that I've got, there will probably need um, a couple of hours though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne, how did you come to be a trading wife? Um, so my husband and I have been together for over 20 years. Um, formerly, I came from a corporate background. So I was um, I did a range of jobs during the time I left school to kind of where I got involved in our business. Um, I'd done some reception work. I'd then progressed through the rank to do corporate executive assistant work. Um, and then following that, I became a stay at my mum when we had our two little girls. Um, and it was probably around 2014. That was kind of where everything came to a head for us in our life. Um, so my dad was unfortunately dying and he'd been in hospital for six months and we had a really terrible time with that. Oof. Um, my father-in-law who was doing the bookkeeping for Dave, um, my father-in-law and mother-in-law were retiring up to Newcastle. So wow. it meant kind of we had all these shifts happening on both sides of the family. And I lost my dad. My in-laws moved um, north and we kind of came to this point where we thought, well, we've got to keep this business running. And, you know, Dave either was looking to employ someone to help him with the book or I become involved. Um, and so I chose to do that because I thought, our girls were just starting through primary school and obviously still needed that flexibility and, and they're sick and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I took on the role of doing firstly just managing the books and kind of invoicing clients and chasing up debts and things. Um, and then my role kind of significantly grew um, because Dave was taking a lot of the phone calls and, as you know, being a trade and on the phone, it doesn't always work. You get clients upset if you're not focusing on their job and, so, yeah, I started to kind of take over the phones and scheduling and booking. Um, and then since then, the business has grown. I, I personally like to take blame because I t always like to rub it in with Dave that clients like to talk to me and not him. But <laughs> as you should. Well, yeah. So, um, yeah, once I got involved, the business kind of grew and the work that we were doing for our clients and our client base changed quite significantly. Um, and yeah, so here we are. So now I've got, um, one of my good friends is my outsider in the office and she's fundamental and pivotal to everything we do kind of in the 
behind the scenes and the admin side of things. She does a lot of invoicing, keeps the boys on track with their reporting and documentation. And yeah, she's definitely my wing woman. Um, and we've got the boys out on the road and Dave um, looks after a lot of the project management, the bigger, bigger clients, builders work, those types of things. And yeah, I just feel like we're in a really good place now. We've got a great team and yeah, things are ticking along really, really well. But Jordan, can you tell us how your role evolved? Like, so you were saying in the beginning you were helping out with the book work. I think that's where we all start. We yeah. start with the data entry and figuring out how to reconcile, et cetera. It yeah. seems to be the easy, soft in, even though it's complicated and boring as anything. Yeah. Um, and But it grows, right? So do, I like you, my role really evolved to I can run the business without him now, although I still don't know how to build a house. It's, it's business. They're very different, yeah. right? Yeah. So how has your role evolved over the time that you've been involved with Thornley Plumbing? It's changed significantly. Um, as I said, I, I literally was the same. I just kind of um, dipped my toe in the water just doing bookkeeping and sending out invoices. Um, and very quickly you start to learn the jargon and you want to have an understanding when you're kind of form formatting reports and things to go out to clients and stratas and things. You very quickly start to develop an understanding of what the boys are actually doing on site now. Um, and, yeah, I think just the growth that our business had, it pushed me more away from just the billing side of things to now doing all the scheduling. So I liaise with tenants, I liaise with striders. Uh, we work for a lot of schools. Mm -hmm. um, so we're heavily in the education system throughout Sydney. Um, and we work for childcare settings as well. So I'm constantly liaising with facilities managers, um, directors of childcare centres, facilities managers at school. We still do general public work. So I talk to those clients as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenging role. Um, but I do love it. We're very lucky. We've got some great clients we work for, um, some of the general public, you know, elderly people they're beautiful and I love working for them and I know all of our team does as well um so yeah my roles change significantly but yeah no no day is ever the same no, I'm sure it would probably be for you or any other tradie wife absolutely I think that's one of my most favorite parts of working in and around the trades is no day is the same and yeah I don't think there's too many careers you could say that about no well we can we can deal with anything from leaking taps to leaking toilet to Tsunamis when you know you've got sewage <laughs> uh, charging through people's floorways. Oh, no. um, we do gas leaks, roof repairs. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of variety in the plumbing trade. Yeah, and a lot of variety in the people that you're dealing with. So as you referenced before, we've got little old couples that, you know, they really need someone to hold their hands often through the process because it's quite confronting for them. And then we've got yeah. very capable um, corporate type roles when you're dealing with schools and childcare yeah. centres, etc. Yeah. And then we've got our team that we're dealing with that, yeah. you know, sometimes team's fun, sometimes it's not so fun. Yeah, we've, we've definitely ridden the roller coaster with employees. We've had some great guys come and go. We've had some bad guys, not, I shouldn't say bad guys, but more challenging stuff that we've kind of been happy to part ways with. I feel like at the moment we're in the best place we've ever been. And, you know, Dave started um, our business in 2003 and I feel like now we've just kind of hit our stride. We've got a great team. Um, the boys know that, you know, we've got their back as much as they've got ours and I think that's really important in running a business as well is valuing your staff and, you know, giving them the reward and recognition, not just, you know, the paycheck. Yeah, totally. Um, they want to have something to work towards. Otherwise, it is uh, like any other job. It's transactional. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I do consider, I mean, we're very much a small family business and I do look at our staff as an extension of our family, essentially, because at the end of the day, we're spending more time talking and communicating with our team than what we do with family and friends that, you know, we choose. We choose. These boys really are a part of our family as well. Um, and girl, obviously, Monique in the office with me as well. Yeah. Yeah. But Lee, I know what you're saying is really underrated. I think I don't think we give it enough thought and understanding that we go to work for more hours generally than we are socialising yep. or even spending with our families because yep. by the time we get home from work, we're, we're often 
winding down for the day and then off to bed. So even though it, it might not take up all of our time, most of our time is spent at work and it's very important that we enjoy yeah. the team that we're working with. A hundred percent. Yeah, to be comfortable for everyone. Edwina, you mentioned that you had some challenging times with some staff that didn't quite work out or suit your business. Yeah. What kind of lessons did you learn during that time? Uh, one of them was don't employ friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of them was a colleague of my husband's. Um, I probably had reservations from the get-go about taking him on, but because of his level of experience, we thought that we had the perfect site. We work for an exclusive girls' school on Sydney's North Shore, um, and we thought it would be a perfect site for him to manage because that site alone um, employs two of our staff for 51 weeks of the year full-time. That's incredible. So it's an amazing opportunity for us in our business. We've maintained it for eight years now um, and hope to do it, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, they're a great client. We really love working for them and hopefully they enjoy us being on site with them as well. Um, but look, I think Dave and I have definitely implemented a don't employ friends rule. Um and, and that was after a challenge that we had with one of our employees. I think you always have the best of intentions when you hire staff, and that's if you know them or not. You always hope that they're going to fit into, you know, the group because there are so many different personalities in a small business. And because you do work so closely, it can be challenging. Um, but I think it's just really trusting your gut. Yes. And I re- regret not doing that with this particular hire because my gut was screaming, don't do it. Yeah. Um, and in the end, we certainly regretted it. Um, but I think, you know, like most things, it's trial and error, right? Sometimes you make really good choices and sometimes you make bad ones and you just have to deal with the consequences as they as they come. So when you say that you could see, well, I'd call them red flags in the beginning, was that something that Dave, or let's out him, we're going to call him Dolly because that's what everyone else in the world calls him. It's true. Is it's that something that Dolly could not see prior to taking the model? Was it something that he pushed through? I think it was something that he probably saw as well, but I think he had such day oh, Dolly, sorry. <laughs> Don't call him either. One of the most loyal people you'll ever meet. He's as loyal as a bloodhound. So that's one of the things I love about him. Yes. Um, but I think from Dolly's perspective, it was almost like he knew that this person had a really good skill set. He came with a great deal of experience. And I think he was almost, um, I don't know, I kind of get the sense that I think he he had some reservations as well, but I think based on their history and their extensive relationship that it would all work out. Yep, got it. Um, and so, yeah, that that would probably be a regret for me mm-hmm. was not trusting my gut and not saying, no, this isn't the right call for us and not not the right call for our team and our business. Totally. I, I yep. feel like we hear a lot of um, uncomfortable situations arise through not acknowledging the red flags when they're there. Yeah. So that's a great point to make in the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Often we can see them and, and – I've certainly had, um, actually, even only this week, um, the builder and I were reflecting over a particular client where there were some real red flags right in the very beginning. They've gone on to be our most difficult and challenging client ever, uh, are still dealing with them some six years later through some really challenging um, issues with them. Yeah. But, and th- those red flags were really apparent. I can recall us discussing them prior to um, taking them on as a client, and then I can clearly, distinctly remember going and sit with them for the the first time because at that time I wasn't directly involved in what was going on. But because of the red flags, I'd put my hand up and said, okay, I really want to meet with these people before we move forward. Yeah. And they charmed me like no tomorrow. And I'm I'm not a silly woman. It's very hard to pull the wool over my eyes and they did it so incredibly well. Yeah. They're still dealing with su- stuff six years later. So I think for me, uh, like you, it's that lesson. There are yeah. red flags. And if the red flags are there, nothing changes those red flags. No. no. And- And we still um, adopt that same kind of mentality, well, I do, because I do a lot of the scheduling and booking of the client work. Um, Even now, sometimes you get a sense of people on the phones or if I send Dolly out to do a quote, sometimes if there's reservations, it's okay to knock back work. You don't have to take everything on. And that's kind of the place that we're in now. If we've done work for, you know, Mr. and Mr. Smith and it 
been an absolute nightmare trying to get payment from them, you know, and eventually they do, but it's taken, you know, months and months of admin time chasing that debt. You know, I'm quite comfortable to turn around and say, look, we're not available, you know. I won't point blank be rude and shut them down and say, look, we're not working for you because you didn't pay your bloody bill last time. But, you know, it's okay to um, not accept every job that comes through. And I'm quite comfortable doing that now and turning people away and saying, look, we don't have the availability. I'm really sorry. You can do it diplomatically and professionally, but it's okay to say no. And I think it comes back to trusting that gut. Yeah, knowing. Is it something that you do or you find easier to do than Dolly does? Um, Dolly's probably, yeah, Dolly, it's an interesting question because we definitely play good cop, bad cop a lot. <laughs> so there are times when he'll say to me, oh, I don't want to work for that person and they're a pain in the ass, blah, blah, blah. And I'll say, come on, you know, it's a good local job. It's a nice little filler. And then so we do have moments of swings and roundabouts where we totally have differing of differing opinions on things. So and I think that helps complement our business working together. Yeah. Um, because as you would know, sometimes working with your husband can be the most challenging thing in the world. Um we talk about this. Okay. Yeah. You'll be the first guest ever that has actually been honest about how bloody hard it can be to work with oh, your husband. Quite often. I mean, there's that old saying about how you get less for murder, right? Yeah. Um, that's true. That is 100% true. Um, and he drives me crazy. I drive him crazy at times. But in the end of the day, we're running a really good, successful business that's creating a great life for us and our kids. And um, yeah. How did you get it to the point where it's uh, mostly harmonious? Because I think in the beginning, I see pretty typically with a lot of couples that we work with, they find it quite uh, challenging to navigate the difference between relationship stuff and work stuff. Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily, I can remember even arguments I've had with the builder, I wouldn't talk to him uh, the same way I'd talk to a client or a team member or another. If somebody else was employing me, I wouldn't talk to them like, I would often talk to him or vice versa. Yeah. So that those early days and navigating what that might look like can be super challenging. What do you 100% it can what be. What does work for you guys? Um, look, I think it's really taking the emotion out of it. Sometimes you do have to have tough conversations in business, so not taking things personally. Um, and I still am finding my way with that. Sometimes if I ring Dolly and need to talk to him about a job or a quote or something that's happening in the business, um, and if he's short or curt on the phone, I sometimes I think, what are you doing, mate? Yeah. You know, if they hang up. But um, I think it's trying to have two very different boundaries. So we've got our work time and then we've got our family and personal time. And I try my best not to have too much crossover. Mm-hmm. So I hate going to bed talking about jobs. I hate waking up at 7 o'clock in the morning and talking about jobs. Yeah. I think... It's really important to have that separation between the two. Mm-hmm. And I think once you can have that, um, those boundaries in place, I think it really does help, you know, the business flourish, but also personal life is a yeah. lot more, you know, comfortable as well. Absolutely. Is yeah. your office run from the home or do you have an outside office? Yeah, we, we run it from home. We're lucky. Um, we've got um, enough space at home to be able to do it. Um, comfortably and, and Monique who works in the office with me comes in a couple of days a week as well. Um, we did look at um, having a factory kind of office set up uh, but we're very lucky we've got a whole work shed on site at the school we work for Right. Um, so all the gear is all saved there so we kind of didn't really from a cost perspective we just thought you know my kids are obviously 14 and 16. If there's times when they're not well, at least they can be here with me. And yeah, it is much easier. I, I think there's a lot of pros from being able to work from a home office, can put washing on in the morning and quickly race up and hang it out and give for the dogs. We've got two big dogs that I absolutely spoil. So they, um, they come and sit with me in the office as well. <laughs> Mine's sitting just there. Oh, mine's up there because you'd probably whinge or try and nudge me or something. <laughs> she's had to be, um, well, she's been very well taught, I think, over time. She's a quiet dog anyway, so she doesn't make a lot of noise at all, particularly when I'm talking. 
I uh, there are some downsides though to having a home office, and I wonder if you've found any of those areas that you struggle with with having the office at home. Um, to be honest, so Dave and I moved from um, one part of Sydney. We've just moved a couple of suburbs away, so we're now in Pennant Hills. Um, our previous home, yes, because I did have an office set up downstairs, but there wasn't enough room in there for Monique and I. So we'd quite often, when Monique would come in on the days of her work, we'd often just sit at the dining table. So obviously from a WHF perspective, it wasn't ergonomic and not all kosher. Yep. Um, but now with our home in Pennant Hills, there's a lot more space. We've got the office area, which is downstairs. So all of our living areas are upstairs. And so I really, once I kind of leave the office, yes, I really can have that separation. Yep. Um, I don't like if we get deliveries and things, usually I'll bring them downstairs because that's the type of thing that I don't like living with. I don't like living with deliveries sitting on our kitchen bench. And I think just being able to have that um, separation is a really positive thing. Yep. I totally agree. I've been through those stages like you where I've had my team sitting at my kitchen table because it just worked at the time and quite frankly for them as well. That's what they were looking for, that kind of opportunity. Um, Long term though, it didn't work because that then bled into all of our life, personal and work life. So now that we have areas where we can separate what we do, totally different. It really, you're able to shut the door at the end of the day, like walking out of the office or coming home from being on the tools. Yeah, and that's the end of work, right? It's it stops Correct. being that that major, I guess, disruption to family life because not necessarily there. The other yeah. thing that we really struggled with, though, is putting the boundaries around those conversations because yeah. obviously, when you're working together, it's a big part of your life together. A hundred percent. Having to put that that hard stop to okay, we're not talking about work after this particular time. That was yeah. really hard to do, and yet one of the most beneficial things that we have done is yeah. that something that you guys had to work on as well. Absolutely. And it's probably still something, to be honest, that we are still continuing to work on. There are still times where a client will ring or we'll get a late email at 10 o'clock questioning their invoice. And so naturally there's that progression to kind of go down that work path again. And then I'll just remind Dolly, deal with it on Monday, not doing this now, you know, Um, because I think you do have to have those boundaries to have, you know, run a successful business because otherwise, you know, like every small business, you could spend 24-7, you know, consumed and replying back to emails and I think that's why you've just got to have that shut off at times. Yeah. so important. Need it for our mental health, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't do it otherwise. It's just yep. far too much. And, and no, well, maybe some employers would expect you to do it. However, it's not normal. It's not normal to mm-hmm. be by what you do 24-7. And I think that's why working from the home we're in now works so well because I can be upstairs in the kitchen. I'm not hearing the notifications on the laptop, you know, chiming that there's a VIP email that's just come through or I just think having that space, having your own personal space is so important. Totally. Yeah. Tell me, Dwina, what kind of um, team do you currently have and how involved are you with your team? Oh, I speak to our team daily, multiple times a day. So um, we have four plumbers on board um, and we have, well, three plumbers. We've got a fourth year who's just about to become a journeyman, which is amazing because um, we've seen the full progression yeah. with, this, um, with this apprentice, Isaac. He's just been an absolute yeah joy to have. Um, and we've got a new first year, Julian, who's just joined us this year. Um, and then there's Monique and myself in the office. So I feel like we run a pretty pretty tight ship. Um, but Monique certainly keeps the boys on track with their reporting and documentation. Um, but, yeah, we all get along really well. There obviously are times when you have to have tough conversations about if documentation's not up to standard or if it's been missed during the day. Um, but yeah, I just feel like our team is a really good one at the moment. Um, once a month, usually the boys will come here. So they'll come for a seven o'clock, um, barbecue breakfast. And I think that's a really nice thing. Usually I get them to do stupid TikTok trends during that time as well, which <laughs> I love it. They, they absolutely cringe over. Uh, we are due for another one actually. So, <laughs> um, but no, I I, as I said, I, I do consider our boys being an extension of our family and, you know, quite often our girls will come and join us for the barbecue breakfast as well and sit around and, you know, 
the boys are obviously paid for that time, but I just think it's really, really nice way of being able to just break up the monotony of, you know, going from job to job to job because the boys do. We run a very, very busy, reactive um, maintenance plumbing business and so some days can be quiet but the, the majority of our work is, you know, critical, time criticals, particularly for the education sector that we're working in. Um and so it can be, the days can be really, really busy. So we always try and dedicate kind of once a month to have that just right stop. Let's just connect. And yeah, it's really quality time. Yeah, totally. Is there anything that you do in your role that you never could have imagined you would do? Oh, well, I do spend most of my day talking about nipples, sharp <laughs> penetrations. <laughs> um <laughs> There's a lot of very funny plumbing terms and jargon that I've had to get my head around. And I know, um, yeah, I could never have imagined myself being, in, you know, involved in a plumbing business, but uh, I, I actually like it now. I, I like dealing with our clients. I'm getting to know the parts and jargon and, yeah, it's, it's actually, I think it's just the variety that I love the most. No day is ever the same. Is it something you don't like about what you do or what you've done before previously? Well, probably the only thing that I struggle with, and I know Dolly definitely does as well, is um, holidays. Yeah. You never fully get that disconnect and that's probably something that I am envious of. When I, back in my corporate world, if you were to take leave, you would get that time uninterrupted, yes. whereas running a small business, we're still filling phone calls, we're still checking emails, we're still liaising with clients in some regard. I've still got to do payroll. Um, that's probably the most challenging part is never being able to fully detach from the business. Yep, I totally hear you. It's not easy yep. to do. And, it, I mean, the structure and systems can be set up so that, to allow for that. However... I think the biggest challenge there is actually the headspace. And as business owners, it's really hard to let go of totally. what's going on so that you can yep. have that shut down. That, that's the biggest challenge, I think, in all of yep. business is the headspace. Yep. What's next for Thornley Plumbing? You guys sound like you're rocking it as it is. Is there any plans or, or goals that you guys would really like to achieve? No, I just think um, retention of our team is probably key for me knowing um uh, uh, having the boys know that they're valued and critical members of our team that they're not just a kind of number on the chalkboard that's a really important thing for me as I said before and I'll keep saying it we've got a brilliant team around us um I think retention of our clients and uh, maintaining that contract that we have at the girls school on the north shore that's key as well because obviously that um employs two staff yeah, you know, and then some all year round, um, and really just making sure recalls are low, that we don't get a lot of callbacks on jobs. Knowing that our quality is always high is important. Um, but yeah, just I mean, we're kind of in that tricky teenage period with our girls, and got one who's about to um, learn how to drive, which is very scary. Um, <laughs> Airplane. Yeah, I, I kind of look at them. They're at a um, a private school and just knowing that we've got a few more years to kind of get through the girls through their schooling and having that financial security is probably the biggest thing for me. Yeah, totally. Is knowing that we won't kind of, you know, have to pull them out and change schools and that's probably my priority, yeah, with the other items I mentioned. It's a nice um, security. You, you've got the perfect word to be able to rely on moving forward Correct. when you have a family yeah but it's really important like yes it can be very hard to have your own business there's a lot of work as you identified holidays and things can be quite too yeah. however there is that upside and I, I I we talk a fair bit on the podcast here about the upside and there can be plenty of listeners in the early days of their journey where they're battling through that tough stuff you know the waking yeah. up two or three or four o'clock in the morning worried about money or yep I'm the team. Well, you know those really t hard yards that we all join. hundred percent. And so it's to remind them that there is this positive and upside as well. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, we've definitely been through that as well. Don't get me wrong. Um, it hasn't always been easy. As I said, back in um, 2014, we had, my dad was dying. Um, Dolly was playing D-grade men's basketball, you know, over 35. Just all these <laughs> old men running around. 
Um, and he ended up requiring a full shoulder reconstruction because he um, ruptured his bicep tendon. Yep. So that that was all happening. And, you know, we've had some really dark, you know, moments in our business. But I think um, just keeping stock of all the positives that you do have is so important because there are lots of positives in running a business. Yeah, there really are. Yeah, so I think it's just kind of keeping grounded, knowing that, you know, those crap days will pass and just staying true, providing good quality work and, you know, hopefully, I mean, we're very lucky. We haven't had to do a lot of advertising in our business. A lot of our business has been word of mouth, which has been awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it's having the retaining our good staff is really important as well because obviously the staff are the bases out on the ground who our clients are dealing with and I think being able to retain them long term, you know, not having a sausage factory of a different plumber every time, you know, they go to a a facility or a centre or a school is really important. Totally. Um, But, yeah, just staying staying true to the business and, yeah, providing good quality workmanship. And, yeah, those dark days do pass. They always do. They really do. Absolutely. You don't have to do it on your own. Edwina, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolute pleasure to talk to you. Can you yeah, tell us? To you too. Absolutely. I um I'd love our listeners to be able to come find out more about you. Can you tell us where they can find you and Dolly, and maybe they can learn a bit more about how Dolly came to be called Dolly? Yes. Well, you can find us um so we're on. Sorry, I've just got a work phone ringing in the background. <laughs> happens to all of us. Um, so we're on uh, all social media channels. So we're on Instagram and Facebook and we've got a website as well. So, um, and the website, we quite often do get a little bit of attention over our team section. So that's worth a little sticky beak. It's uh, something a little bit different. There is a little bit of false advertising in the photos. I uh, obviously am far more attractive on our website photo. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> oh, that's, um, no, we just try and have fun, run run a good business and yeah. I love it. But if any if anyone wants to reach out or if anyone's got any questions about kind of, you know, where they can um, kind of, yeah, I suppose if there's any guidance or something that I can ever offer, people are always welcome to reach out as well. It's beautiful. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And if you've got any questions or you'd like to find out more, check out the show notes. There's a whole bunch of links in there where you can find Edwina and Dolly. Um, and don't forget the Trady Wife Life podcast discussion group if you just search Trady Wife Life over on Facebook. You'll find us there. Um, was just fantastic speaking with you. Thank you so much for being generous with your time. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. It was really nice to meet you, Phoenix. Thank you. Thank you.